You are listening to The Foundation of Wellness, a refreshing take on diet and lifestyle. Join me, Marisa Moon, as we tackle modern health with innovative and ancient principles. I'm a certified primal health coach and intermittent fasting instructor at marisamoon.com. Hey guys, it's me, Marisa. Thanks for being here today. We have a really great guest on the show. This guy's awesome. He helps so many people to free themselves from chronic pain. And he's here today to explain why other muscle relief therapies don't relieve your pain and what you can do even at home or of course with his company to find relief once and for all. Now I personally have experienced dozens of treatments from Eric's business Delos Therapy and it helped so much with my pinched nerve and chronic pain which we get into about the middle of this episode. Now what they do over there is really different and quick and affordable and so I'm happy that you'll have a chance to learn all about it now. After the interview, Eric told me that I can offer my listeners a free evaluation at Delos Therapy and it will be performed by him, which is a big deal, at one of his Chicago locations. So if you are in the Chicagoland area, you definitely want to take him up on this. The evaluation is usually 30 bucks, but if you email info at DelosTherapy.com and tell them Marisa from the Foundation of Wellness podcast sent you, For your free evaluation, you'll be able to schedule an appointment at any location you want. It's a 20-minute appointment, and they're going to discuss your history, your your condition, and then you'll get 10 to 15 minutes of a sample treatment so they can go over the recommended therapy for you. And that's a huge sample because treatments at Delos Therapy are usually under 30 minutes, so you should definitely take advantage of this. You can look at all of their locations at DelosTherapy.com and even call to schedule if you prefer that over email. All right, we're almost ready to start. Just listen here as I read you Eric's bio. Eric Owens is the co-founder of Delos Therapy, where Delos therapists relieve clients of chronic muscular pain and inflammation and dysfunction using mechanical pressure to pinpoint muscle tightness known as knots or hypercontracted fascia. Don't worry, he's going to explain fascia in today's episode and to restore muscle pliability. Eric's also the co-founder of a sister company, Delos Robotics, which is a robotics and AI approach to automate Delos therapy treatments, alleviating chronic pain for the masses. Now, Eric graduated from Midwestern University. Hey, that's where my husband Eric went. Interesting. With a master's degree in biochemical science, biomedical science. There we go. Eric brings his well-being insights as a lifelong professional table tennis athlete and his accomplishments include three-time U.S. national champions and Pan American Games gold and bronze medalist, USA Athlete of the Year and nine-time national team member and he's inducted into the USA Table Tennis Hall of Fame. That is so cool, like cooler than Forrest Gump. I didn't even know that. He's a brilliant dude and I am excited to dive in. So here we go. Eric, how are you? I'm so glad you're coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. I was excited, a little bit nervous, uh, (laughs) but I'm excited to be here. And it was great working with you last time and great to work with you again. Yeah, I've been wanting to have you on ever since I heard you speak at the summit because, I mean, you really struck so many points that people need to hear. And if you remember, it was like 95 degrees out and you were one of the last speakers. And so people were probably checked out. This is the perfect time to bring you back. And people seem to be even more in pain around the holidays. I feel like in my family and people who I'm spending a lot of time with, I noticed this is a hard time for them. I don't know if it's the cold weather. We live in the Midwest, what that's all about, but you're the pro. So I would love for you to just quickly tell us how you started Delos Therapy and what is Delos Therapy, like in a fifth grade level. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, I'll I'll try not to get too technical. You know, my father is actually the original inventor of the technique. Um, I would say, you know, he was a mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, specialized in troubleshooting very complicated systems. And so he had a lot of chronic pain. It's all the best specialists in the world that in the Anderson and was really frustrated by 
not only the lack of solutions, but the lack of really good detailed explanation as to what was happening, because everybody that he saw said, we don't know what's wrong. And he just couldn't believe that we were so advanced in so many different fields of science, but nobody could explain to him what was happening into his body. And just having that engineering background and knowing that he could troubleshoot complicated systems, he turned his body into an engineering project and figured out some interesting observations about how muscles work. Uh, the very first observation he made, and the same observations that we make today, is that around any area that hurt or feels stiff or numbness or, or tingling or weakness is that the muscle tissue in that area will feel really hard. It's really important to understand muscles in their healthy state. They should be very soft and spongy. We call that pliable. So pliability is sort of a becoming a hot topic. But when you flex a muscle, it should be hard. And when you relax, it should be very soft. So he consistently mm. noticed throughout his body areas that hurt always felt rock hard and other parts of his body that felt normal. The muscle tissue was very soft. So he knew there had to be a muscular component, but he didn't know anything about muscles. He had no training in medicine and he wouldn't have all of the imaging done. Everybody, you know, did MRIs, CAT scans, x-rays and said, your muscles are totally normal. And that's when it clicked. Whatever was happening pathologically inside of that muscle wasn't showing up on imaging. But the question remained, what is it? What, what makes that muscle tight and how do you get rid of it? And that's when he started exploring alternative means like Rolfing and acupuncture, acupressure, trigger point therapy. And he found any time a practitioner applied direct pressure right into the muscle, right into the center of that tightness, it seemed to be effective. But it was combined with a bunch of uh, gliding and and sliding and, and kneading techniques that were part of traditional massage. And he didn't find those particularly effective. So I would say that was the second major observation. So using a system of just pressure, really thinking like an engineer, thinking three-dimensionally, he noticed that the muscle tissue that was dense and fibrotic, when he applied pressure to it, it softened. And as it softened, his range of motion increased, um, pain decreased. And make a very long story short, he ended up fixing his own body and was shocked that a guy with no medical training at all but an engineering background could fix his body. And some of the best specialists in the world had no, no solutions for him at all. So he ended up quitting his job in the mid 1980s down in Houston and opened up a pain clinic, had a tremendous amount of success. Uh, at one point was working on a vendor Holyfield, Carl Lewis, the Olympic track team, 30 of the Houston Oilers. I, I grew up around all these pro athletes. Cool. He, he was featured on the front page of the Houston Chronicle. Um, so he had a tremendous amount of success with this sort of, this understanding and this thought process that wasn't biased in any training it was a completely original idea that no one else had really thought of. And, but he wasn't a businessman. He wasn't able to scale at the levels that he wanted, but, and he even didn't even have a, a great explanation as to mechanics of the therapy. He just knew pressure did something. He didn't really know what. So it inspired me to uh, get a degree in biochemistry. I ended up getting a master's in bio biomedical science, I ended up going to medical school teamed up with a business minded individual so we could have, you know, business expertise and the science to support the therapy. And we started Delos in 2012. And, you know, in medicine, not a lot has changed. I would say most of the patients that we see are coming in, they're hurting. They've gotten some type of imaging, assuming there's not a structural problem. The image comes back negative and they say, well, we don't really know what's wrong. Maybe you should stretch it out if you're feeling stiff or you should do some type of strengthening exercise if you feel weak. Those things are definitely beneficial, but they're missing the mark as far as understanding that pliability is the core of all of that. And I think we've had a tremendous amount of success. We just opened our fifth clinic. We signed a lease today on our sixth clinic in wow. Monaco. So we are growing quickly with this Congrats. idea. Of, yeah, and we've been talking about pliability for years and now that Tom Brady's talking about muscle pliability, everyone's all excited. You know, it kind of drives me nuts. But at the same time, I'm glad there's awareness now when people are talking about it and athletes are saying you have to keep your muscles soft and spongy. Oh, my gosh. I don't even know where to start because a lot of the things you said might might make people wonder, like, is that me? Is that what he's talking about? So describe to us what we're missing when we're going to find something to help our pain. It is, how do we know it's muscular, first of all? And if we go to a specialist, we should assume that they, you know, know what's out there. But it sounds to me like you've just created something that never existed before. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, pain is multifactorial. So pain is complex, right? There are many, many different causes of pain. There could be, you know, neurological, it could be structural, it could certainly be 
um, muscular. So I think specialists in, in medicine, you know, we have these specialists that have specialized in uh, the neurological aspects of pain. We have orthopedists, there are physiatrists that focus on different aspects of pain. But in medicine, there's not a single medical specialty for muscles and fascia specifically. And so mm. there's not a lot known about those systems. That information is coming. There's a lot of research happening in Europe, and it's sort of starting to filter into American medicine and physical therapy. But I talk to a lot of chiropractors. We have chiropractors as pa patients. We have physical therapists as patients. They send us their patients because it, it makes their therapy more effective. So I, I talk to a lot of professionals in the field. And they know a lot about physical therapy. They know a lot about chiropractic. They might know a lot about medicine. But my experience is they don't know a lot about muscles and fascia and how all of it is very interconnected. So I, I never tell patients, you know, you should come to Delos and not go see a chiropractor. You should come yes. to Delos and not see a physician. I absolutely think patients should be seeking out multiple modalities because all, all of us coming together is the ultimate treatment. They're all interconnected. They all have a synergistic effect. But I would say the most common overlooked component is of a muscular origin and most chronic pain, it, you know, not acute. Make sure we understand that it's if you break a bone or you, you fracture something or you twist something, there's our specialists that can handle that much better than I can. But if you wake up every day and your back feels stiff or you're a runner and your calves are tight or your feet hurt or you have headaches or your shoulder, you're a tennis player and your shoulder feels tight, that's repetitive use of muscle tissue that will cause that muscle to get tight over time. You can get an image, assuming there's not a structural problem, that image will come back normal and the symptoms will remain. The symptoms are pain, stiffness, weakness, inflammation. That's when patients start exploring those things. I would say the three most common things I hear on a daily basis in my clinic, we see probably 80, 90 patients a day. The vast majority of them are stretching, foam rolling, and getting deep tissue massages and not having any results. So my understanding of the anatomy is that dense fibrotic tissue in the middle of that muscle that's not getting detected on imaging, none of it stretches. It's buried deep inside of that muscle. If you look at the depth of the muscle, patients that are foam rolling across the top or getting a massage across the top, they're actually not even touching the interior of that fibrotic tissue in the bottom of the muscle. So they're not even touching it. So hmm. It makes perfect sense to me that they're sort of just compressing tissue on top of the problem instead of attacking and going directly into the problem, which is why they're not feeling better. They're on the right track, meaning at least they're stretching, at least they're foam rolling and getting massages because now they're thinking it's potentially muscular. But the application of the technique isn't effective enough to elicit any kind of change. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you feel stiff, if you have pain, if you notice that your workouts are getting very good, if you've seen a couple of practitioners and imaging is completely normal, these are all the signs and symptoms that it's probably a muscular problem. Mm, that I mean, makes that's sense. something that there aren't a lot of people out there that are trained to be able to deal with that effectively. Okay. And I want to say I came to Delos Therapy years ago. Um, I don't even know how I found you guys. Probably at an event, I think, because you guys do a lot of events. And it was because I had a pinched nerve, like my piriformis syndrome. So yep. this muscle around my hip was like always in a knot and it would get bad enough to where I was driving on top of a seat cushion and to stop like the impact of like driving in Chicago and then turning my head would even cause like this sharp nerve pain. So I thought I had sciatica. It was actually a relief that it was piriformis syndrome. And your team, I was going three times a week. I have to say, I can't believe how affordable it is compared to anything like it. It's massage, physical therapy, you name it. It's way more affordable. You guys sell packages and I only have to be there for like 20 minutes and I keep my clothes on. I'm like in and out, you know, just lay on the table with your business clothes or your street clothes and they are still doing the therapy. So it's a lot different than going for a massage. And I, that was like really the only thing that helped me 
uh, to keep the pain away. Once we got it away, it was like the only thing. Now I moved away from Delos therapy from Chicago. And so I use an acupressure mat that helps me a lot. But once it's already flared up, I'm like trying to remember all the things my technician told me. I'm like using a little, like, it's almost like a lacrosse ball to work on the knot, like very particularly. And um, you taught us a little bit about fascia at the summit, but I think it's really important since you brought it up a couple of times. Why don't you tell us what fascia is? and why that's so important when it comes to our pain. Yeah, you know, and to, to go back to your case, you know, sciatica is something that we commonly see. Nerve impingement, nerve entrapment is something that we commonly see, assuming there isn't a neurological problem or, or some type of nerve damage. And most of the time that is the case. Muscle, tissue, and fascia that become tight, that become constricted, can actually pinch and entrap a nerve and cause neurological symptoms. And so people think that they have a neurological problem when all it is is tight muscle tissue wrapped around that nerve. So applying pressure in the right angle and the right location creates space around that nerve. So nerve impingement, if you feel a sharp pain, if you have sciatica, we have radiating pain, patients with radiating pain down the shoulder, down the neck, down the leg, we see that on a daily basis. That can all be perfectly relieved by applying pressure in the right spot to relieve that nerve entrapment. And yes, the, the treatments are short. They're 20, 25 minutes. They're focused directly on the area that we locate and identify as the main problem. There's no disrobing. There's no oils. Uh, patients love it that, where they can come in their business attire on work. So you don't have to take a shower or anything. So you, you lay down, we fix the area, and you get up and you go. So it's a, a very effective treatment. And we do have treatment plans. The frequency is, is needed in the very beginning to remodel that muscle tissue. But to go on to your second question about what fascia is, that is, you know, there's so much research coming out detailing what fascia is. It, it's a very, very complex system. And I know mm. in medical school, you know, the very first thing that we did in anatomy class is you remove the fascia so that you can look at all of these important structures. It's like, let's get rid of this stuff so that we can look at anatomy and study anatomy. Well, it turns out that stuff is actually pretty important. And I would say, where, where is it at? It's like between the skin and between the muscle or something. Well, you have multiple layers of fascia. So you have a, a layer of fascia directly below the layer of fat. So you have skin, you have a layer of fat, and then you have a layer of fascia that's embedded inside the layer of fat at the bottom of the fat. That's called the superficial fascia. Okay. So that's a layer of fascia. There's a layer of fascia directly below that called the fascia profundus. So there are multiple layers of fascia even before you get to the muscle. Mm -hmm. The muscle itself is wrapped in fascia. And, it, and if, if we go to the smallest level, each individual muscle cell. So let, let's talk about how a muscle is organized. A lot of people don't even know how muscles are organized. Nope. So if you look at each individual muscle cell, it's called a muscle cell or a muscle fiber. Each individual muscle fiber is wrapped in fascia. Mm. And, yep. and so you take a bunch of these muscle fibers, it's usually around 60 to 100 of them. You need some way to hold those muscle fibers together. Well, what's a great way to hold a bunch of muscle fibers together? You wrap those in fascia. That is actually called a muscle fascicle. So you got an individual muscle fiber wrapped in fascia. You put 60 or 100 of those together in some container that's wrapped in fascia. And then you've got a bunch of these fascicles that are all together. There needs to be a method to hold these fascicles together. Well, you wrap those in a layer of fascia. Wow. And that's actually exactly what a muscle is. It's, con it's, it's contained of a single muscle fiber, a bunch of muscle fascicles, which is a bunch of muscle fibers in there, and then a bunch of muscle fascicles together, all wrapped together. That is actually what a muscle is. So you have two layers of fascia yeah. above the muscle, and then you have three layers of fascia that are wrapped around and inside the muscle. So, And all of these layers are contiguous with one with each other so they are all communicating um another thing so one thing that's important about that is you know when you wrap all uh, the length of your muscle in fascia it's a way for the muscle to transmit force throughout the muscle so anytime you move the body is transmitting force from one part of the body to the other the way it transmits that force is through the fascia so it, it holds the force contained inside of that muscle, and it's a really, really effective way to transmit that force throughout the body, so to uh, make efficient movement. Another thing that's interesting about fascia, it's a highly neurological system. So something that's come out fairly recently within the last few years is that the fascia contains six to ten times more sensory nerves 
than wow. muscle tissue. So it is a highly, highly neurological system. So pain, stress, proprioception, so the uh, body awareness in space, how your body feels in space, which is interoception. All of this is communicated through your fascia to your brain of how is the force being transmitted through the muscle? What is my position in space? How does that position actually feel? So people know when I bend over, my back hurts. Well, when I reach for a, a, my cup of coffee, my shoulder hurts. The way your body's communicating that is mostly through the fascia and the sensory nerves embedded in the fascia. So I would say those are the two main components of fascia is it transmits force throughout your body to augment movement, but it's a system of communication so that your body knows how does it feel with these movements? Is there a problem here? Does this problem need to be addressed? And, and what does that problem manifest as? It typically manifests as stiffness and it manifests as pain. So that's how you know that there's a problem area. And that's the area that we directly attack with our therapy. Oh, okay. I was wondering that. There are maybe other people already onto this um, that that's so important to relieve pain or, you know, where can people start to learn more about it? Oh, I mean, there, we, we are by no means not the only ones. I, I think, you know, like I was saying earlier, there are many people around the world that are doing research on fascia. Uh, there's a, you know, a fascia research uh, congress uh, with PhDs and scientists that are studying this at a very intense level. Okay. And everything is moving towards the idea that repetitive use of muscle tissue causes a fibrosis, a, a hardening of yeah. the tissue inside the muscle and that pressure directly into it in multiple angles is by far the most effective way to break all of that apart. So think about the anatomy. There are multiple layers of fascia above the muscle and there are multiple layers of fascia inside the muscle. Most of the problems are happening inside of the muscle. So any kind of a rolling technique, if you look at the depth of the muscle and you look at the layers on top of the muscle, that you can have problems there as well. Formerly is only affecting the superficial layer. So if you have a problem at the superficial layer and you foam roll, it can help. And it can also help with some of the hydration and the, the fluid mechanics of the superficial fascia. But again, most of the problem that causes stiffness, when you feel it, it's way below the skin, it's way below the superficial fascia, and it's deeply embedded inside of that muscle with complex patterns. With that being the main problem, a foam roller will not, absolutely will not address the inside of that muscle, which is one reason why more of the more modern foam rollers have those little nubs or yep. prongs on them. And if you read the instructions, I, I've read the instructions over the years, a lot of, you know, years ago, they would say roll back and forth. I read the instructions now on some of the more modern day foam rollers, they say to hold pressure. And that's why they have those little nubs on there because the nubs concentrate the pressure into one single point. Mm -hmm. So... I'm not a big fan of rolling across the tissue. I'm a bigger fan of holding pressure yeah. directly into the tightest spots. And hang out with me for a day. You're going to hear patient after patient after patient saying, I'm foam rolling like crazy. <laughs> I don't feel any better. Yeah. I hear this all day. If you don't have a major problem, you might foam roll and say, I feel great. But if it gets tight enough and the inside of that muscle becomes dense and hard enough, a foam roller is not going to be nearly precise enough or in the right directions or the right angles to be able to address the inside of the muscle. Okay. So I'm hearing you say that it's important to have very targeted pressure on Correct. the point where you're having like a knot or the, you know, the muscles most tight, I guess you could say you feel Correct. like you, the you hardness. Can actually, you can actually think of that as a stretch. So really think three-dimensional. We always think about the length of the muscle, right? So when we do a conventional stretch, like if we bend over to try to touch our toes and we stretch our shoulders or our necks, we're trying to pull the, the ends apart. It turns out that's not very effective. And most of that th that you're doing there is really happening at a neurological level. The, the muscle tissue itself isn't changing much at all. Mm. So pulling apart is one way, but if you think three dimensionally, you can you can stretch it this way, but you can also stretch it this way directly yeah. into the muscle, which is what we're doing. I actually view our therapy more as a stretch than a massage. I'm not stretching apart. I'm stretching directly into it and I'm physically separating everything in my path as I go directly into the tissue. So I'm two I'm taking two muscle fibers that are physically stuck together and I'm forcing the separation by pushing between them. So the direction of the pressure and the yeah. angle of the pressure are absolutely critical. If you press in the wrong spot, 
it's not going to do anything. Yeah, yeah, I get it. It's like I'm picturing like a little ball of dough. If you were trying to like make some pizza dough or something, you wouldn't just spread it in one direction. I mean, you're you're kneading, you're going in every direction, turning it over, flipping it. And so I can see how the Delos technique is really getting the muscle at all different angles, but you're not moving like distance like you would in a Swedish massage. You're really trying to like stay in that targeted area, you know, at all different directions on the same muscle. Yeah, because if muscle tissue and fascia are in a very healthy, pliable state, it's very uniform. So the muscle tissue is soft, it's spongy, there's no density, assuming you're not flexing it or there's no dysfunction, there's no density, everything is very uniform and consistent. But what you'll notice around those areas that hurt or feel stiff is that it loses that consistency. So part of the muscle will feel very uniform and consistent. And then there'll be one part of the muscle that feels densely hard and fibrotic. So how do we create consistency and uniformity of that entire muscle? It wouldn't make much sense to glide across the entire muscle. You know, let's say 50% of the muscle is in a good, healthy, pliable state. The other part of the muscle is in a very densely fibrotic state. So gliding across the entire muscle doesn't make a lot of sense to me. What makes more sense to me is the first thing is the dense part of the muscle. Let's figure out what that structure looks like. We don't have an image. We don't have an MRI. We don't know what it actually looks like. So we have to palpate it. We have to feel it. And we have to determine what that three-dimensional structure looks like. And I guarantee you, if I did this experiment with anyone, whether they have a massage background, a medical background, and we saw part of the muscle was healthy, and we saw part of the muscle was densely fibrotic, and it had a very specific shape, and I ask anybody whether you have training or not, I say, what would you do to restore uniformity to this muscle? I would bet they wouldn't touch very much of the healthy part of the muscle, but they would look at that fibrotic part of the muscle and they would apply pressure, but the pressure would be very specific to how that structure of tightness is oriented. Okay. And as soon as they applied pressure to that structure and the structure changed, it would drive the next angle of pressure. The next angle of pressure has to change in real time. You don't just randomly apply pressure and hope for the best. It's like you're applying pressure, you're feeling the change. The next mm. angle of pressure changes in real time. And over time, you create that uniformity of the entire muscle. And I would say we're really the only ones that there, there are people that are applying pressure. They're figuring out pressure is effective. But I would say we're the only ones that are really changing our angles in real time to create that uniformity and consistency in the muscle. Cool. And all of your locations are in Chicago, right? Currently, yes. Uh, we have six locations in Chicago. We have plans for expansion in Colorado in 2021, which we're wow. very excited about. And there's some preliminary plans to uh, discuss some expansion out in California. And I remember from your bio that you're also working on a robotic sort of Delos therapy integration. We are because um, robotics technology and artificial intelligence has really, really become much more mainstream. It's, it's in a variety of fields that you never would have thought of. It, it's involved in cancer diagnosis. It, it's, it's getting more and more involved in medicine. And from a purely maintenance perspective, you know, a patient comes in and they have a complicated um, system of pain and we're experimenting and exploring and really trying to figure out the three-dimensional orientation of their tightness, a robot's not going to be able to do that, maybe in 20 years or something. A sophisticated robot with artificial intelligence, with sophisticated sensors to be able to determine where your tightness is and how that tightness is changing in real time, we firmly believe with the right technology, a robot will be able to do that. So we're trying I'm to sure. set this, and we have a prototype, it's pretty cool, cool, that basically analyzes the length of a muscle, it analyzes the texture of the tissue. If a, if a muscle, part of a muscle feels soft, it'll move wow. on. If part of the muscle feels hard, it'll spend more time there. And the sensors will be able to detect that the tissue is changing so that it can move on to a different area. So we plan on incorporating that into our current treatment. So a lot of patients will have three or four things that are hurting, you know, their low back hurts and their calves hurt. There's no reason why I can't be treating your low back and a a robot that's pre-programmed that knows exactly what to do can be focusing on your calves at the same time. So it'll be a little bit more efficient. But we also think that this will be a way to license this technology of really sophisticated high-end pressure to physical therapists, to mm -hmm. chiropractors, to massage therapists, to sports teams, to athletes. Yeah, um, I really think that this will change the world in a lot of ways. And I think it'll be a way for us to get this therapy expanded out to a global level. 
Wow, your father would be so amazed. That's so cool. I mean, well, what, I, is he still him, around? He, he's still around. Okay, and, great. You know, he's a, a true visionary. And I still remember in the 80s, him saying the future of the, th you know, it, it, it's funny. My dad's funny. like half the things he says, it's like kind of in the crazy bucket and the other stuff. It's like, <laughs> wow, that's really profound. And you're always trying to figure out which one's which, um, you know, because someone that really can create something like this is, is definitely brilliant. But he's always said the future of the therapies and robotics. And I always put that in the crazy bucket. And now that technology is becoming advanced, and I met a couple of robotics engineers that figured out pressure was effective independently. And it seems like, you know, we'll always have human therapists, right? People need people to care for them and love them and treat them and things like that. So that'll always be part of what we do. But I do think that there is the possibility of, it, uh, of getting robots and artificial intelligence incorporated into our technique. Absolutely. I'm sure you're right about that. Well, let's get super practical here. Um, a lot of questions came to mind while you were explaining to us everything about the technique. Now, if somebody can't come to Chicago or they are never going to try Delos therapy, but they want to do some of the things you've spoken about, what are some of the places to begin? Like, do they just tell their technician, like, I'd really like you to do more targeted work. Can you stay on that muscle? How much pain should, should you experience when you're doing it? Is pain a good thing? Should you ice afterwards? Can you walk us through some of the at-home remedies? Yeah, all good questions. I would say a couple of tools that could be used, um, something that we use in our clinics all the time. We actually sell them. It's on Amazon. It's called The Novel. I want to say it's like 10 bucks or 12 bucks. You can you know, find it online that concentrates pressure into one specific spot. So laying on the novel, I think is fantastic. Theracane is another one uh, that you can buy online that I know a lot of patients use a little bit more difficult to travel with a Theracane, but you can certainly travel with a novel or a lacrosse ball. So anything, if you're at home and you know, it, it's funny, it, it's like, I have so many patients they are, they're doing so many different types of therapy. They're not getting much better. And they'll come to me. And as I'm explaining this technique, they'll say, you know, the only thing I find effective after all the things that I'm trying, the only thing that gives me relief is when I grab a lacrosse ball and I dig it into my back. And I just kind of laugh and I say, well, out of all of the things that you're doing, what's the only thing that's applying pressure directly into the tight area? And it's the lacrosse ball. It's exactly what you should be doing. It lacks a little bit of precision. A, a lacrosse ball will never replace a therapist. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're at home and an area is feeling tight, I think there's this intuitive nature that every patient has that they just want to put a thumb or something directly into it and they mm -hmm. intuitively know that it feels better. So I would say anything that you can find. I mean, my father fixed his body with, with they didn't have theracanes and, and novels back then. He was using uh, broom handles and doorknobs and corners of doors. So anything that you can use to focus yeah. pressure directly into a spot that will provide relief. If you are seeking out a practitioner, I would say the closest thing to our therapy would be Rolfing, R-O-L-F-I-N-G. It's after uh, Ida Roth, who is the inventor of Rolfing. Um, there's an entire field worldwide. I would say Delos therapy is very well grounded in Rolfing. That was one thing that did give my father some relief. He found um, some effective components of Rolfing, some ineffective components, and he basically removed the ineffective components concentrated on just pressure. Okay. But I would say the foundation of Delos therapy is really well grounded in Rolfing. So if there's a Great. Rolfer in your area, that's where I would all, also go. Any kind of a massage therapist, uh, you know, the more clinical massage therapist, what's interesting to me is they'll massage, they'll do traditional massage, deep tissue massage. But if they ever find an area that's a problem area that feels particularly stiff, they typically won't massage that area. What they'll do is they'll hold pressure yeah. in that one area. So they, they figure out it. that there's a massage, but then if there's this problem area, they just hold pressure because it's more effective. So it's interesting to me. Well, if, if it's more effective to hold pressure, why aren't you just doing pressure the entire time? Mm -hmm. Right. So, so we really want to separate in the field, the difference between any kind of a gliding technique and pressure because they're not the same. I think Swedish massage is fantastic. Yeah. There are many reasons people should be getting Swedish massage. But if your tissue is densely fibrotic, you should not be gliding over the problem. You should be pushing okay. directly into it, whether you do it yourself or you have a local massage therapist apply pressure. Oh, man. Thanks for explaining that. That makes a lot of sense. Now, personally, when I started doing at-home sort of therapy and I used something like a lacrosse ball, 
it would flare up for the next like 12 to 24 hours and then it would be like gone. So it yep. worked. But I just wanted to bring that up in case that's common so people know it might not feel better immediately because you're agitating it. Is that right? Sort of. So it all depends on the health of the tissue. So okay. I would say the vast majority of the patients that we see at Delos have immediate results. We push directly into the fibrotic tissue, you break it up, there's no flare up and they feel great right away. Wow. But if the tissue has been tight a long time, if it's irritated, if the nerves are inflamed, if there's inflammation in the tissue mm -hmm. itself, and it's been like that for a long time, and we're going, going directly into irritated and inflamed tissue, and we're breaking apart collagen fibers directly in that muscle, it can definitely cause pain or a flare up. Yeah. And that's when I think icing mm -hmm. is important. Um, I wouldn't ice too much. You know, icing doesn't do anything to loosen up muscle tissue. It, it's mm -hmm. all really just sort of getting rid of some of the in inflammation, um, getting rid of some of the pain associated with the therapy, but also understand that the, our therapy itself is actually causing a good inflammation. Mm -hmm. right? So when you, you know, if you cut yourself by accident, you know, you cut your wrist or you cut your arm and there's a good inflammation that begins that causes healing of that tissue. You know, you get fibroblasts in the area that lay down collagen and, and the cut heals. You don't want to stop that process. Yeah. You want that process to actually happen. A lot of the same processes are happening with our therapy. So we're pushing into dense dysfunctional collagen. We're physically breaking it apart. We're stimulating fibroblasts in that area to lay down new and healthy collagen. That is an inflammatory process. I don't necessarily want to stop that. I want that process to go on, which is why 12 to 24 hours, even though you might flare up a little bit, it's feeling better. So what I would tell patients is it could be part of the healing process. If it's unbearable, if it's very uncomfortable, if you're an athlete and you have to go and compete or you have a big meeting or you have something that you need to do and the pain from the therapy, from the lacrosse ball is causing some discomfort. Icing can help mitigate some of that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I also do think it's decreasing some of the inflammatory healing process. I want that healing process to happen. I don't want to inhibit it, but at the same time, it is a balance. And if you're pretty dysfunctional for whatever reason, then ice yeah. can get you through that or cryotherapy can get you through that. I also think that that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I should say also that this is when it was nerve pain, like it was impinging on a nerve. And so when it got that bad, sometimes it would take for it to get that bad for me to actually do something about it. Yeah. And so I really would flare it up to the point where it would be throbbing. And so that's yeah. probably why the ice would help. And I didn't yeah. ice very often. It would just yeah. um, be my little routine that I did to get the pain to go away in the very early stages. But um, like when it was at its worst, I mean, but I do want to say that it was incredible to me how much my stress levels affected that pain. I continuously experienced flare ups and like the resurgence of that same pinched nerve whenever I was taking on too much in my day to day work life and personal life. It was like directly associated with how much my knot would return. And I find the same thing that happens in this repeating knot beneath like my uh, trapezius and like around my shoulder blade. That is totally correlated with how much stress I'm carrying. So do you think people can find like real healing when they haven't changed the way that they're experiencing stress or, or using those muscles throughout the day? I, I do. I, I think that it's important to understand that stress can definitely exacerbate pain and tightness. Um, pain is pretty complex. A lot of it is actually coming from the brain as an output. You know, a, a good example is if you cut yourself, it'll hurt. But if you look at it and it's bleeding, it hurts worse. Even though, the, <laughs> yeah, that's why, so true. Why, why does it hurt worse whenever it's bleeding? Well, there's there now needs to be more motivation to take some type of action. So pain in and of itself is actually an output coming from the brain. If you're a high level athlete and you're a, a figure skater, for example, and you twist your ankle on the ice during a competition, it won't hurt at all. The damage has been done, but it will not hurt. You will get off of the ice. You'll calm down, and 30 minutes later, your ankle will be killing you. Well, what was different? 
in that moment, the motivation of the competition far outweighed the structural damage. So the pain, the brain didn't allow any kind of pain to actually go through. And now that the competition is over, there's still structural damage, but the pain is now saying we have a problem. So there's definitely a mind and emotional component to pain wow. that comes through the brain. So the more stressed out you are, the more the brain is going to perceive and, 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 and increase the motivation. That motivation is pain to take action. Mm. I'll also say that if your muscle tissue, you know, this is something that I hear quite frequently. We work on the upper traps and upper back a lot, probably the most common treatment yeah. that we give. And a lot of patients say, I, I think it's coming from stress and I'll challenge them a little bit on that statement. And I'll say, if your muscles are perfectly healthy, perfectly pliable, you might be the most stressed out person in the world, but I don't think it would manifest physically. Mm -hmm. But what happens is there's a pre-existing amount of tightness in that tissue. Mm -hmm. You get stressed. Now it's worse and the pain is worse. So the conclusion is the pain is coming from stress when in fact, the stress just made things a little bit worse and crossed over that threshold. So I Makes would say, sense. of course, try to get the stress down, try to meditate daily, try to get your, your diet on point. And, you know, there are many things, uh, you know, the gut brain uh, access and connection and things like that. Uh, keep your muscles healthy, move, exercise. You know, there are so many different things when you're looking at pain. It's not just loosen up muscle tissue and, mm -hmm. and that's where it ends. It's there are many, many different aspects. And I think stress is a big one. And I, but I think there, there are effective strategies to get the stress down while we're addressing the muscle tissue. I was also on this crazy schedule at the time. So I was sleeping at irregular hours and switching like my internal clock was like all messed up. You know, it, I really teach people that you need to stay on a routine because your body depends on you for that. So I think that was a big reason, too, why I couldn't get like past that plateau of healing and so do you think that sleep is is important when you're recovering I think it's absolutely critical uh, i think when you sleep there's a lot of repair that's happening i think your body is very much dependent on its circadian rhythm so i think you should be going to bed about the same time i think you should be waking up around the same time um i actually have a device called an aura ring which i think is really fantastic where it measures your sleep cycles how much time you have spent in your sleep cycles uh, it measures your heart rate variability, so you can actually determine it from a neurological perspective if you're working out, are you physically recovered to do more work the next day? All of that comes down to effective and very consistent sleep, and I think it's absolutely important that everybody take that very seriously. Awesome. Good advice. I agree. Now, I do want to give you the opportunity to say anything else before we wrap up. It's been so awesome having you. And I personally love doing like hour long interviews because you have so much to offer. But I like to keep them as short as I can for the listeners uh, convenience. So why don't you send us off with anything you'd like to leave listeners with? And I just want you to know how much I appreciate you being here. Well, thank you. Always a pleasure. And I'm happy to come back at any time. I, I would say you know, a lot of people are thinking about muscle health. And when they think about muscle health, typically people think about flexibility. They think about big, strong muscles, or they think about power or endurance. I want to run faster. I want to run longer. I want to get stronger. Uh, I want to get toned. No one is thinking about muscle pliability. So I really want to, to drive that message home that pliability is the core of all of those things. If you don't have pliability, muscles cannot become flexible. They will not be strong. They don't grow. They don't become toned. So whether your goals are to gain weight with building muscle or to lose weight and tone up, you have to have pliable muscle tissue that's capable of doing work. Mm. And if you focus on pliability, all of those things become possible. If you don't focus on pliability and you focus on the, the outskirts of pliability, on just flexibility, on just strength, on just power, you're actually missing the core component and the most important by which all of those other things become possible. So what I would tell patients is if you're feeling stiff, even if you're not feeling stiff, if you're feeling stiff, definitely come in and see us. We can help you. But if you're not feeling stiff, do a self-examination. Push into your muscle tissue. Any area that feels a little bit hard, it should feel perfectly soft and perfectly pliable and spongy. If it's not like that, there's some percent of your workouts on a daily basis or energy levels that's being compromised. And then if you restore pliability, your energy will skyrocket, the results in the gym will skyrocket, and everything else will become much, much easier. Ah, oh, cool. 
you're making us all want to do better and even practice prevention, which I think I've learned is so important to make sure that that pain never comes back. Yeah, it should never come back. Being proactive is way better than reactive. And, you know, people define the health of their muscle based on whether it hurts or not. If my muscle doesn't hurt, it's totally healthy. Right? It, it's like the absence of disease is health. Right. So that's a, a quote that's kind of going around. And, and I just I, I totally agree. Right. So it's like you don't just go from a healthy state to a disease state. There's some deterioration in the middle. Mm -hmm. You don't go from perfectly healthy muscle tissue to, oh, it just starts to hurt. There's some deterioration in the middle. Let's catch it before it hurts because it's compromising your workouts. It's compromising your energy levels. It's compromising your uh, ability to move. And you will be shocked how much better you can actually feel, even in the absence of pain. And the long, you know, longevity and anti-aging are a hot topic right now. I would say this is by far the most effective anti-aging treatment for muscles. You look at mm. people that are 50, 60, 70 years old and they're stiff. Yeah. That is aged, dense, rock hard, fibrotic muscle tissue that can absolutely be prevented. And that is an anti-aging treatment for muscle tissue. Oh my gosh. Powerful stuff. I'm excited for everyone to hear this. So uh, thank you again. And I'll put all of your links in the show notes so everyone knows where to find you. It's delostherapy.com. Thanks for yeah, your expertise. Yeah, please check us out online. We've got fantastic medical animations that actually detail what's happening inside of the muscle, how stretching actually misses the mark, how foam rolling and massage glide over the tightness. I think the animations are very educational for patients. So yes. Anyone that has a chance to go online and look at those animations, I think it'll, yes. it'll really provide great education and visual tools as to what we're doing. But thank you for your time. I appreciate yeah. it on the podcast and, and hopefully we can continue to get this message out there. All right. Thank you for listening. Please share this episode on your social media or with a friend or family member who needs help with recurring muscle pain. And this episode is brought to you by our affiliate, Dry Farm Wines. Enjoy old world natural wines in this unique wine club called Dry Farm Wines, where they test their wines, like literally lab test them, to be sure that they're sugar-free, sulfite-free, and low in mold toxins. These wines must be grown without irrigation, just natural rainfall, and without chemical fungicides or synthetic yeast, they just use the wild yeast that exists on the grapes, like the real way you're supposed to be making wine. And the result is a collection of incredibly alive wines made the old fashioned way. And you can try dry farm wines yourself with a case of six or red or white or mixed. And you can get your seventh bottle for only a penny when you use my link, dryfarmwines.com slash FOW podcast. I am so in love with these wines. They don't give me a headache or hangover. It's incredible how clean these wines are compared to commercial wines. And by the way, if you didn't listen to that episode that we did with the Dry Farm Wines founder, Todd White, he talks about all the wine industry lies. You won't believe the crap that's in our wine. You got to check it out. That's episode number 60. Natural wine and wine industry lies with Todd White. Definitely do that. Now, your support just means the world to me, really. I put a lot of time and consideration into creating this podcast every week. I do everything myself, and I can't wait for Jessica to be back. She says she's coming back, so get excited with me. But for now, you know, it's a lot of work. So make it worth it for me by getting the word out, you know. I just love sharing this information with you, and your support makes a big difference. I invite you also to reach out to me if you are considering a health coach, someone to motivate you and, and just inspire you and keep you accountable to overcome certain health challenges and reach your wellness goals. My approach is unique too because I combine strategies from life coaching and health coaching with all of my clients to help you to create systems and find clarity in your daily life and reach your specific wellness goals in a way that makes sense for you. So just go to marisamoon.com slash consultation to schedule your free strategy call with me. 
That way we can just get on a quick call and discuss your goals and you can learn what coaching might look like for you. It's affordable and fun and effective and private coaching is my favorite thing to do. I just love spending time with you one-on-one. That's why I made it so affordable. And I know what it's like having a coach. I mean, I've had business coaches, ADHD coaches, life coaches, and they're amazing. I want you to have that experience too, especially if something about your weight or your health is just driving you bonkers. When you're ready, come see me. And if you're interested in private coaching at all, even if you're not ready for that consultation yet, you're going to want to get inside my Facebook group called The Foundation of Wellness because I am giving away a free full-length coaching session to two individuals inside my Facebook group. Again, that's facebook.com slash groups slash FOW podcast. I'm doing this for a reason that you're going to be surprised to hear and you'll only learn about in the group but you have to be in the group to even get the offer and learn why I'm doing this. And hurry because I wanna get this offer done by the end of January. So find my Facebook group, The Foundation of Wellness, the same name as this show. That link again is facebook.com slash groups slash F-O-W podcast. Thank you for being here and I will see you next time. Bye.